Hey, this is Chronoab, and in this video, we are going to make this enemy, which, when it does not see the player, will just patrol a certain area, meaning go back and forth in a platform. But when it sees the player, it will start performing a jump attack. So we'll first of all make the patrolling function and then we'll make the jump attack as well as the flip towards the player function and at the end we will combine all of them with our animation. So this is the first tutorial in a mini series of two videos because the overall video was really long so I just split it up into two videos so that it would not be bloated. So with that said, if you like the video please smash the like button hit subscribe and if you want the latest videos as quickly as possible you can also support this channel on Patreon. So with that said, let's get started. Alright, what we need to do is first of all let's set up our enemy in such a way that it patrols a certain area, meaning basically it will just move left and right on a single platform until it sees a player and when it sees the player then it will jump towards the player. So. To make that, first of all, let's just make this patrolling system. So to make that, we need two empty game objects, which will be a child of our enemy. One will be called go round checkpoint and the other will be called wall checkpoint. Now I'm going to put this wall checkpoint right in front of our player right about here and the ground check point I'm gonna put it below the player and a little bit in front of our player now this both of this should have a gizmo so I'm gonna give a green colored gizmo in the ground check point and a yellow colored gizmo in the wall check point so let me just put the player a little bit below so that we this has to go inside all right so let me just bring it a little bit below let's just bring both of them a little bit in front now what's going to happen is in our code what we're going to do is we're going to make small circles on our wall check and ground check point which will check if we are touching the ground or not meaning how we're going to do that is every it, these two will basically check every object that is inside the ground layer right this is in the ground layer this is in the ground layer and this is in the ground layer so what's going to happen is we are going to make the enemy move at a certain direction Right, and when it's at the edge of this platform, basically this ground check will be like, bro, I'm not touching ground, please flip and go to the other side. So then it will just flip and start moving in the other direction. And when it is moving in the other direction, right, in it, and it is at the edge, what's gonna happen is if there were no wall, what's gonna happen is basically the same thing. Ground would be like, bro, I'm not touching any ground, flip and go to the other direction, but since there is a wall, what it's going to say is, bro, you're touching a wall, flip and go to the other direction. Then again, we'll flip, start moving in the other direction. So we're going to do that back and forth until at the end we can see the player. And when we see the player, it will start jumping towards the player. So that's going to happen. So let's make our script here. I'm going to call it jump enemy attacker. I've made this script like five different times. So yeah, it's already there. I'm going to just write jump enemy attacker, write anything you want. All right. I am going to write that. So I'm going to make this. It's here. It should be here as well. All right. It's here. Let's open this up in Visual Studio. Now, first of all, what we need is we need a speed at which our enemy will move. So we need a movement speed. So we have the movement speed. Now we need to tell which direction it will move. So we don't need to show it in the inspector, by the way. So let's not do that. Just write private float and move direction. Then we need to know if the player is facing a show, which direction the player is facing, basically. So private boolean facing right. So in my case, I am facing right. So true. Now, if your player is actually facing left when you start the game, that means just write facing left is equal to true instead of facing right is equal to true. All right, so facing right is equal to true. Now we need the reference to our ground check and wall check point. So write public, meaning serialized field, transform, 
ground checkpoint first of all and then do the same thing instead of ground checkpoint right wall checkpoint so we have a reference now because we're going to create small circles we need a radius for that circle Now this circle, which will form in, on our, not inside, on our wall check and ground check point, should check for something, which is going to be our ground layer. So let's make a reference to the layer mask and call it ground layer. Now we need some other Boolean value, which will say if we are touching the ground or not, it'll be true or false when you touch the ground and not touch the wall and do the same thing for the wall as well. So we need a Boolean called checking ground and checking wall. Now we need a reference to the physics of our enemy. So write rigid body RB. So private rigid body and enemy RB. Now, because this enemy has two states, which is past patrolling and we, after some time we're going to make jumping. So let's give it a header so that it will be easy for us to know which which thing we are doing right now. Meaning which, mm, what do you call that? Which values are here? So this is all for patrolling, going left and right until you see the player. So write a header. For patrol. And this will be other because this is not <laughs> why am i writing serialized field so uh, header so these are some other values which are which are related to basically meaning these are related to both this will be related to our jumping as well as our moving left and right so that's why here now let's make a reference to our rigid body enemy rb let's call it in the script by writing enemy rb is equal to get component rigid body to d Sorry, I had rigid body here. All right, so we made that. Now let's make a function called patrolling. Is patrolling or just patrolling? Something like that. Now before we do that, let me just set up our ground check and wall check. This checking wall and checking ground functions, right? These booleans, so that it'll be easy for us to flip afterwards. So here, let's write fixed update by the way because we're going to do everything related to physics in the fixed update. So fixed update checking ground is equal to physics 2D dot overlap circle overlap circle. Now in this we need a vector to point and because it's for checking ground so we need our ground check point. Then we need a radius how big the circle will be so it will be our circle radius and this basically overlap circle needs to check something which will be our ground layer. Now we can't write ground checkpoint, we have to write ground checkpoint dot position here and everything is fine. Now let's, let me just make a duplicate of this and instead of checking ground, write checking wall. Now everything is done. Now here just write enemy RB dot velocity is equal to new vector 2 which will be our move speed on the x-axis move speed multiplied by our move direction so that is on the x-axis and for the y-axis let's not do anything so enemy rb dot velocity dot y so once we do that this player will start moving on the right side because our move direction is right now move direction is zero we should keep it as one because since we're facing right it has to go towards the right as well so we have done that and that's why our facing right is true as well let's put one here so basically it will go right but we can't flip so let's make a function another function and call it flip and in this function what's going to happen is first of all our will change our move direction so move direction and multiply it by minus one so Whenever we flip, our move direction will always change to the opposite direction, meaning if we are going right, which we are right now, that means when we flip, our move direction will be left. And if we are left, meaning move direction will be minus one, if you multiply it by minus one, that means it will be positive one and we'll start going to the right. Down here, we have to also declare that we are facing right. So right facing right is equal to not facing right. So again, the same thing. When you're going to the left, 
your facing right will be not facing right. And when you're going to the right, your facing right will be again facing right. This will just do that. Then we have to flip our sprite or this whole player as well. And we can do that by just going in the Y axis and writing 180. See, it flips. So we're going to do that inside here. And we're going to do that by writing transform dot rotate and inside a bracket right because we're not going to do anything on the x axis zero we are going to only rotate it on the y axis so 180 and nothing on the z axis so zero once you do that the player will flip now let's set up a condition so that the player will flip so now if if basically if you are not checking ground, that means you're at the edge, or let's say you are at the corner or like this and you're checking the wall. So either you are not checking the ground, so not checking ground, or you are checking the wall, right? Either you're not touching the ground or you're touching the wall. Then what's gonna happen is it will check if you are facing right or not. So if I am facing right, meaning when I am not checking the ground or checking the wall, and I'm facing right, then I'll start flipping. So flip. Else if, else if, else if I am not facing right, that means I was already facing left, right? When we like reached the end of our platform or started touching the wall, and I was already facing left, then I will just flip. Basically, once we actually do that, let me just set up everything in here. And I think everything is done. For the movement, let's put five. For our ground checkpoint, let's put our ground checkpoint. For our wall checkpoint, let's put our wall checkpoint. For the radius, we can put like something like 0 0.2. And you can't see that. I'm going to set it up later. And what we're going to check is the ground layer. Now, let's make it in such a way that we can see that circle being formed on our ground check and wall checkpoint. So let's go down here at the bottom and write void on draw gizmo selected. And our color of our gizmo, gizmos.color will be, let's say, a uh, green color maybe, or blue. I'm just keeping it blue, all right? So it'll be a blue color. And what's going to happen is gizmos dot draw, draw wire spear, which will make a circle. So that circle will be on our vector three center, which is going to be for our ground checkpoint, basically ground checkpoint dot position. And the radius will be circle radius, all right? Let's do the same thing here for the wall as well. If you want to put another color here, you can't, oh shit. Okay, you can do that by just doing this and changing the color to maybe red. But in my case, I'm gonna keep both of them as blue. Right now, another circle should be created in the wall checkpoint. So wall checkpoint and the radius will be the same. So once we do that, once I hit save and I go back, you can see circles and these circles are affected by our radius. So I'm going to put it at 0 0.2 because that is perfect. The circles look perfect. And since everything is set up, let me just hit play. And what's going to happen is it'll move probably, but it did not. And the reason why is that, yep, I have not called it in our update function. So let me just call it in the update function. Control V and do this. Hit save. Okay, let me hit play. And what's going to happen is, okay, it's flipping like, Crazy. The reason why is basically both ground check and wall check are making a circle, right? Physics 2D overlap circle on our ground check point. I just, yeah, I, that's why you should never just cut and paste, like make a duplicate of a code. Sometimes mistakes like this happen, but no, no problem. Let's just write wall check point instead of ground check point and everything will be solved. Okay, once we do that, let's just hit save, go back here, and it should move. So when it moves, when it is at the edge, flips, and here, when it is the when it touches the wall, it flips. Oh yeah, let me show you like that, right? Let me just pause it, and let's just play when it when we uh, let me just do, but, ah, fudge. All right, I don't think I need to show you, right? I should hit pause I and mean, if I can show you properly, all right. Can that happen? Let's see. Okay, okay, okay. Just see here, our ground check is right now true. And every frame it is true, true, true until it actually goes out and it becomes false and it goes back 
to being true. It flips and goes back to being, being true. If we do the same thing here, let's, let me just bring it about here and hit play. Yeah, it's moving, it's moving. The ground check is still true. As you can see, at one point, both of them was true, right? Ground check was already true, but when, I, when the wall check became true, it flipped and started moving in the other direction. The wall check is now false again. And that is basically how it works.